Hey everyone, it's Puya, and today I'm here to go for Valorant Patch Notes 5.12 rundown and also afterthought because it's been seven days of the patch being out and now everyone has experienced it. So we're from now on we're gonna have these kind of videos that we're just gonna go over the patch note after seven days and see what did the patch really change? Did it affect much? Did it not? And also we're gonna have a patch rundown uh, on this revealed as well and then an afterthought like this video so let's get into it valorant patch was 5.12 so basically what changed in this patch as of the valorant highlight was the specter and the agents was breach cypher harbor killjoy uh, phoenix sage sky yuru chamber fade KO, Omen, Raze, and so on, Viper. So these agents, from what I've experienced so far, just the changes itself made the game slower so far. But let's get into the details. Agents, Breach. So his Rolling Thunder and basically the ultimate got an increased old point and now is 8 instead of 7. I would say this change is actually really healthy for the game because especially on the maps that Breach gets used a lot like Haven, like uh, Fracture, his ults are so strong and you cannot really basically avoid it as much as you can on the other maps and his ults basically give you free sight or give you free retake it's just way too strong so i really really agree with this change that they made and so far i've been enjoying it a lot like when he has his ult it's really damn strong but when he doesn't it takes him a while to get there so it is more healthier for the game instead of him ulting like three times a game it's more like a two time ish Next up, we got the big changes, which was Chamber. Oh my god, this changes. I, I cannot be happier than uh, any time I was with these changes. These changes are top-notch. They basically um, hit the node that was needed to hit. So a lot of people, when these changes were revealed, said that, oh, yeah, like these changes doesn't really change much about Chamber. It's the Chamber main thing is his teleport. The Chamber main thing is him just going with the op, get a kill and TP out. Well, I do agree with that. Yes, you are right. But the thing is, now he has only one teleport. And if he basically goes for an op kill, but if the enemy team is smart enough and play around him rather than letting Chamber play around them, like they can reveal him and force him to TP. They can KO knife him, force him to TP. They can fade dog him, force him to TP. They can Sova dart him, Sova drone, anything that forces him to basically TP out. And after he TPs out, well, you can see him on your minimap. He's way too predictable because it's such a low range now and you can follow it up immediately with a raise nade with a very explosion hit on sight and rush on his face basically because he's gonna be in the animation of fixing his suit. So I would say that these changes are really amazing. You can still have that high risk high reward with the chamber but it's not gonna be as strong as it was. But let's get into it. So here's Q, Headhunter. Updated stability curve and a spread increases after second bullet when spamming this is explicitly meant to reduce low precision body shot spam as an effective combat measure at the range so i did test with this actually and from what i've seen so far uh, you can make him work like before uh, all you need to do is to just add a 0.3 second uh, delay to your shots and that will be again like close to 100% accurate, especially if you're going for the right clip. But if you go for spamming, like, like that will work, obviously. Like, that's a very good change, I would say, for low elo people that just go and spam the left click. And also, some moments in high elo will people go greedy and just spam left click while also moving and shooting as well. So, this was a very good change, I would say. It does really uh, reward the people who are patient enough, reward the people who are accurate enough and also hurt the people that want to be greedy next up is teleport so a rendez rendez boss i'm not sure if i'm saying that correct or not but basically it's teleport chamber now places a single anchor that can be teleported to well inside his range so as i said he now only has that two single yellow thing is that he can go into its range and then teleport into the middle of that 
uh, remove teleport activision height resurrection so i don't think this really changed much about chamber like in before you could have make him work with uh, the height as well but now it's just a little easier also one thing i forgot to mention radius increase from 7.5 meter to 13 meter now this basically uh, a lot of people said that oh this is a buff to his teleport but if you go back and actually look to the previous um ranges and radius it's actually not like it is a buff to a single anchor yes but in before you could have go from a to b on bind and now you cannot do those sorts of things so this i wouldn't say really affects him that much he can move up further yes but if he moves up further he's basically increasing the risk even more uh next up what we got Increase weapon equip time after teleporting from four point uh, sorry point four second to point seven second. Now this adds to my note that I said that when he teleports back, he's gonna be in his basically uh, animation of fixing his uh, suit, and it will be easier for you to go on him and kill him. And this change basically makes it even easier than that. Like. Um, I uh, when I played chamber I didn't really feel this as much but when I was playing against him it was really really easy to feel it that hey I have much more time to go on him and headhunter is unaffected by this change so headhunter basically his sheriff is not affected so he can immediately teleport and pull out his headhunter like before so on pistol rounds it's not really that effective to uh, destroying uh, his teleport anchor now disables it for the remainder remainder of the round instead of being placed on the cooldown so this was a huge change i would say and people are sleeping on it like a lot of people when they see a chamber and he's teleport they be like oh his teleport is on cooldown let me just don't really uh, break it and stuff like that but breaking it now actually rewards you a lot because he doesn't he's not gonna have his teleport anymore so i would say that whenever you see his teleport immediately break that even like let's say uh, there are times that you see his teleport but you don't see him because he's placing himself into a specific position like an off angle that you see his teleport first make sure to break that teleport at first because when you break that he's not gonna manage to teleport out anymore and that's a free kill for you Next up, we got Chamber no longer in, uh, incurs an addition cooldown when recalling his anchor after teleporting. That makes sense. Health decreased from 80 to 50. So that's basically his uh, teleport health, which is, again, a thing that makes it easier for you to break with a utility like a raise nade or a KO nade or a kill joy nade. Next up, we got Trademark, which is his trap. So the trap range is now resurrected. Trademark will be disabled when the chamber moves out of the range and reactives, uh, reactivate once he is inside it. So basically, this change makes him uh, be like a killjoy. If you played killjoy or you played against her, whenever she goes out of the range in a specific range of her tele, uh, sorry, her TP. Oh my god, what am I saying? Her uh, turret or her trap, it will get uh, disabled and it will be visible to the enemies. So this now forces him to play around his trap, not like, for example, on Bind, he cannot place his trap where that small anchor in the market is and then, uh, sorry, small stair on the market and then push into the B side with his team anymore. So he would be forced to play around his trap more so, so and think more about his trap placement more. I would say this change makes him more skilled rather than and you playing on breeze let's say place uh, your trap on a flank and then go on lurk b like this change will make him more skilled to play more with the team rather than playing in more of an agent that is a solo player but i would say this change also makes him and rewards him for playing with the team and being like a duelist player rather than playing as a sentinel as much so this is a fine change i would say definitely puts a limit on chamber but i would say it is still a fine change and also this change itself will help cypher which is basically the next buff a lot so uh when you have cypher that can do uh, place a trap on a and breeze and then go and lurk b why not pick cypher and go chamber can now be recalled mid round without line of sight so this is a very good change i would say too that you can just take out your tp bag whenever you're out of its range and then replace it again a lot of people i've seen that they don't do this because they're not really used to it but make sure you use this to your advantage that you can just pick it up reposition your trap whenever you're out of the range of it and then move on 
30 second cooldown on recall so when you recall you have a 30 second cooldown obviously that is fair uh, destruction remains permanent and so basically when it gets destroyed you cannot have it anymore initial arm time increased from two to four seconds now this this is a big change because if you're gonna play uh place your traps aggressively it's gonna take four seconds for it to get activated and then from there the enemy can just sit there imagine you're placing the trap to clear pizza on ascent and there's a chamber there he sees the trap but he can just sit there for four seconds and then after that four seconds if you be uh, greedy and don't wait for your trap to go activated he can kill you and then teleport out or it, the jet can do the same thing so this change i would say is one of the biggest change and nerfs to his trap than the range itself health increase from 1 to 20 that's fine nothing to say then we have Tor the Force, which is his ultimate and his operator. So fire rate decreased by 57.5%. Now, this is a big change because this basically you don't have the chambers that go pew 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 it all the time. Like they have to uh, shoot, take cover, and go for a shot again. They cannot just immediately zoom in again and shoot again. However, I'm not sure if this is a bug or no, but I find a way personally to uh, make this 57% to more like a close 22 slash 30%. How is that when you make a shot with your ultimate, you swap back to your Sheriff Headhunter and then immediately saw back to your ultimate that makes it to don't feel as long as the 70 uh, sorry 55 uh, 57 percent so if you want to play with his operator one thing i found work very nicely and especially if you practice your aim to and his headhunter on how to make headshots with it so let's say there's two enemies in front of you you kill one of them with the operator immediately pull out your headhunter and shoot a headshot with that or a body shot it doesn't really matter and then immediately swap back to your ultimate what that does is that in it basically swaps very very fast and you can shoot much quicker than this uh 57 percent uh, so i would really recommend you guys to do that next up we got his slow basically on both trap and his ultimate uh, so it got reduced from six second to four second i really like this change as well a lot because it was a pain to play against the chamber and that just slows you a choke point and then you're forced to basically sit there for six seconds and that six seconds is more than enough for his allies to rotate and then delay that even further with uh, mollies and stuff like that so i really like this change i don't think this is that big of a change but it does make the game to be in a healthier pace a phase next up we got cypher health and trap health going from 1 to 20 nothing really important we got prowler of fate going from 100 to 60 now i really like this change as well because now it takes you three bullet with a vandal to kill it and sorry not three bullet two bullet but in before it was like three bullet and um uh, like that single bullet sometimes it would have uh, caused you to get bitten by it so i really like this change as well again this is another change that I, in my opinion makes the game healthier next up we got harbor one of the agents that i really dislike in the game to be honest with you like he is a fine addition but i don't think he really did much to the meta like wiper is so much superior than him his utility more so um hurts you and your allies because of that slow effect affecting your allies than you think then uh, basically affecting the enemies as much and it doesn't really have that much of a punishment for enemies to push through your utility so i would say he still has room to buff and we can see that riot is trying with him but i i'd give it like a month or two more so they can find what to exactly do with him to find the way into the meta uh high tide which is his e and the wall basically that he creates its duration went up from 12 to 15 i would say that this change is very good because it makes the game more consistent now consistent because viper and every other smoker um most of them except brimstone has a uh, their smoke mainly is 15 seconds until it goes down uh and brimstone is 20 seconds so i would say this change makes him be in par with other controllers which is very good then we got cascade which is his uh, seed basically the orb and uh, sorry not the orb the wall that he creates and this duration went up from five to seven seconds i like this change as well because basically now with harbor and before it was like 
you have your wall which is 12 seconds and you had before the last patch buff you had only one wall which was five seconds so in general you had like a seven and 17 second um uh smoke mode more so but now because his orb is a shit uh shitable so i'm not counting that but now what is happening is that you have a 15 second and now you have two seven seconds which makes it a 14 seconds so now basically it's like you have two smokes for yourself as a harbor rather than in before it was more so one smoke with the addition of two seconds so i really like this change as well i would say that this change again makes them to be more in par and from what i've tested and i've seen so far it does make him more much more effective uh, especially on holding choke points but again the problem with him is that people don't really um, respect his utility they can easily just push out from it so that's something that I would say that Ryan really needs to implement maybe like increase the slow duration um, maybe remove its affection from your um to affect your teammates i'm not really sure but they really really need to do something about that because Viper had the same issue and it feels like they didn't really learn much from the Viper but let's go to the next one uh ko his knife zero point got health increase from 1 to 20 nothing to say and his uh ultimate now uh basically uh, this is a typo it should be x so no cmd is now from 7 point to 8 point which again is the same as breach uh, whenever you had the ko ult he could have just go in as a duelist pop flashes and then when he dies you just res him and it would give you a lot of control on the map and now with this change i would say it's again very nice to have and makes the game healthier because it makes the game slower and you don't really take the sights as quickly anymore like before you have to think more about the game next up we got killjoy her lockdown and ultimate got health increase from 115 uh, 150 to 200 well a lot of people that i've been talking about were really at first happy Happy about the change because they were thinking that oh it's uh, gonna now take two utility to break the killjoy ult where i did research myself if you uh, basically what it really changed it made the people who find lineups be more skilled because they would have to need, uh, be more precise with their lineups now like in before whenever you would throw let's say a ko molly and that KO Molly land next to the Killjoy ult, even the error sides of it would have break the Killjoy ult. But now it has to be in the middle of the KO ult because the middle of it does 200 ish damage and the uh, sides of it does around 140 slash 150 damage, if I be correct. And uh, with raise nades, for example, in before, the small things and a little damage of ex the main explosion could have killed it, but now it needs to be exactly on the O. Well, as I said, this change, I don't think it really changes much about the Killjoy issue that she has with her ultimate. Uh, still, we have a lot of things in high elo that can counter, but I would say this change really helps her in lower elo. It's like a golden plat. But in higher elo, well, people take the time to go in and find very precise lineups. I don't think it really changes much. Next up, we got her non-storm health going from 1 to 20. It doesn't really matter much. Uh, next agent omen we have her q paranoia going from 13 uh, 300 to 250 so i really like this change as well um like they're making the game again more consistent he was he used to be the most expensive flash but now it's basically the same as others like um year and stuff so i really like this change it makes again more consistent uh next up we got phoenix uh he's blaze basically his wall uh the cost decreased from uh, 200 to 150 now this change matters a lot because of that 50 now you can have his wall and flash and go for a shield and play with your classic on the pistol round whereas before if you would have go for shield you would be forced to just buy a, a flash or wall and you couldn't buy both at the same time so this change makes you to have both on the pistol round this change is more so on the pistol round i would say not really affecting much for the gun run and fall by rounds uh, next up we got raise uh, her boom bot health decreased from 100 to 60 Again, I really like this change. There was so many times that I've seen people just shoot the boom butt and expect it to die and you just wouldn't die. But now it's just much, much healthier. Uh, Blast pack, her Q got health increase from 1 to 20. Doesn't really matter. Uh, next up, Sage. So 
her barrier or basically her wall the fortified delay got increased from 30 seconds to 3.3 so this is basically the time that it takes for sage uh wall to be go from um uh, uh half health to full health basically you can shoot it easier in this period of time so now by it getting increased by 0.3 seconds you might think that it doesn't really matter much but from it test things it does matter a lot like imagine you're playing on haven and uh, you're attacking enemy stage is walling b a lot of the time when you would swing out of the window to kill the wall and destroy it you would have end up damaging it a lot and then toward the end you the wall would have fortified get full hp and you would have run out of bullet without even breaking it with a vandal but now you can easily just break it that 0.3 second it might seem that it doesn't really matter but it does matter a lot and you have to be more careful with your sage wall and because it's so much more uh, it's so much easier to destroy it uh, next one we got the healing orb which is her e uh, self heal total amount decreased from 60 to 30. now i've seen a lot of people be mad about this change because they cannot really uh, self heal anymore they would have to focus on um, healing others more than themselves and to be honest with you i think that this is a good change uh, because in before we've seen a lot of people pick sage and uh, like basically what this does is more so damaging battle sages and i don't think that riot really wanted to have battle sage they want to have more of a support agent because um she and uh, sage and sky are the only two support agent i would say that can heal right so them uh, being able to one of them being able to pivot out of that support to go uh, into more aggressive style leaves sky to be the only support of the game and i think that they might revert this back whenever we have more healing agents but i'm not really sure but in general i would say i agree with this change it removes a lot of toxicity that exists in the game uh with sages being stubborn and healing themselves rather than healing an ally and uh, the ally heal total amount increased from 60 to 100 which is a very amazing change that you can just and also it's very fast as well because when you increase the he, total healing amount you increase the total heal per second too so now her uh, basically her healing the allies is so much more quicker than it was before so i really like these changes i would say from the healing orb of the sage i would say that it does makes her to play more passively rather than playing as aggressive as she was before but i'm really glad that they made this change we already have enough aggressive agents we do need to have some passive agents next up we got uh, server recon both going from 1 to 20 doesn't matter and uh, next up sky so sky q basically um her dog i believe it is uh cost got increased from uh, 250 to 300 now uh, this is again another change that affects the pistol run more so so now that you go for a shield and a dog uh you end up with having 100 left over whereas before it would have been 150 so you could have more uh, money for your future rounds basically that even 50 money might not seem much uh in pistol but it does affect for future economy rounds but now that you don't really have that as much it does damage the team economy a little however again the next change as you can see regrowth which is her healing cost got decreased from 200 to 150. so as you can see riot is trying uh, to make her a support agent as well and uh, basically there's pivoting into more of uh, having sage and sky to be more support and trying to make people go for more healing and supporting other people rather than only being for themselves we had a lot of people uh, not even buying the heal because they were like what's the point but now it's basically more rewarding to buy the heal because it doesn't really damage the economy as much so now you can go for a shield and then um 150 hill so that ends up with you with 550 and then because of this you can also buy a flash as well because flashes are 250 so uh you have two flash and a heal whereas in before if you would have go for a flash you couldn't buy an, any other utility so now you can buy this which is i i would say is nice so next one we got wiper so viper ultimate the smoke integrity region time increased from 5 uh, to 25 uh, 
Let me come back to that. Max time out of the smoke decreased from um, 15 seconds to 8 seconds. So I really like this change because it does... Um, in before a lot of vipers would have ult and then just afk outside of it oh people could like finally me into my peel because i'm just not even there but now it's uh, she has basically half of that time to be out of it and i would say this change really helps people to fight the ultimate much much better and her ult point got increased from seven to eight seconds again as you can see riot is basically increasing the ult ultimates that make you take a sight easier like a breach of like a ko ult, like a viper ult and making you have a tougher time gaining that ultimate uh, instead of nerfing it too hardly so I, I really like this change again makes the game slower a smoke integrity region time went from 5 to 25 mm, i'm not really sure what this means i come back to that so Next one, we got Yuru, my favorite agent. His gate crash health and decreased from 160. Well, <laughs> this change doesn't matter a lot, let's be honest with you. Like, a lot of people don't even know that you can shoot his te teleport. So, this basically kind of says people who read patches that, hey, shoot the damn teleport. But I would say that um, from my experience that I played Yuru so far, maybe in 10 games that I played, maybe only one of them people were shooting my teleport so this is not really a change that i would say is nerfing you euro as much it's just kind of making it more consistent with other agents and now her uh, also his cost of the teleport got decreased as well which is again another thing that i really really liked like this was a very good buff for euro i would say uh next one we got the um assist tail tuning so after debuff has expires where a player will be still be awarded for an assist so basically if you flash or exit out of this smoke like let's say you're the smoker and an agent else goes out of this smoke you have now two seconds to basically uh sorry actually three seconds to no yeah two seconds two seconds to basically if your ally gets the kill you get rewarded with an assist it doesn't really change much as you think and then we got the damage changes so these are the changes that a lot of people sleep on that they don't think it matters a lot but for a uh, high elo i would say it does matter so much so brimstone in uh, incendiary so um let me just make sure of that because i'm not sure if that is his ultimate or his molly Okay, this is Molly. So now, Brimstone Molly can destroy Killjoy Nanosaur. So it is very good to counter a Killjoy with his Molly. Now, if you don't have an agent like so on your team to break it with your Shark Darts, her Alarm Bot, her Lockdown. Uh, so again, more ways to find lineups with a Brimstone to not break her ultimate. Cypher Traps, uh, Raise Blast Pack. Uh, so a Recon Bolt, Rain and Leer, Sage Barrier Orb, KO. Uh, zero point uh, which is his knife uh, chamber trademark uh, chamber uh, teleport and then fade prowler and his ultimate orbital strike now damages chamber um, teleport as well well these changes uh, now as i said it doesn't really you don't really need to know them as much however if you really want to be that tiny bit more detailed player uh, than others you can understand them because now you can find lineups with brimstone molly to break a kill trail now you can find uh, oh there's a chamber with his teleport on pizza let me molly him so his teleport breaks so these kind of things that you can do now um that in before it wasn't really as obvious that you could have do or not so we got phoenix hot hands which is his e basically uh is gonna damage a cypher trap kill your nanostorm kill your alarm button lockdown so basically all of kill your uh, utility you can also break with uh, um um so, uh, phoenix molly now let me try to search this phoenix molly uh, damage because i do want to make sure if you can break uh um what is it called killjoy ult with a phoenix molly so phoenix molly does 240 damage oh yeah you can all right then so another way to break the killjoy ult so you can break a killjoy with a phoenix molly now 
amazing more in there for Kildred. so raise bless pike doesn't matter doesn't matter sage's barrier or you're not going to use a phoenix model to break a sage barrier or however it is good to in those situations that let's say you want to use a heal use your molly to heal yourself and then there's a wall next to you as well and you want to break it after you heal yourself so you can use your heal and the molly under the wall heal yourself at the same time as breaking the wall so that could be the only one time that you really use it in for that regard uh fate prowler doesn't matter um the rest doesn't really matter you can also break chamber trap with it that i would say is nice uh if you again don't have agents like Silva that can do that with their shark dog uh, next one we got blaze damage uh so he, this is his wall so blaze damage now also can break a killjoy lockdown let me go back to that website uh phoenix molly damage because it did have it and i believe it was more than 200 so let me just double check this yes phoenix firewall is 230 oh my god killjoys i'm sorry for you like killjoy mains if a phoenix wall can also break your alt i'm really sorry for you so that is very sad and uh the rest is the same really nothing to say about that then we got ko uh ko zero point now has a voiceover that tells the allies but this is a very good buff i would say for ko like uh, it's like basically when fade uses the ult and she uh catches three people with the ult he said found three and now the ko does the same as well if he is suppresses three people with his knife he says suppress three or something in that regard and his fragment now damages fade prowler doesn't really matter so killjoy nanostorm now can break a cypher trap killjoy uh nanostorm oh you can break your enemy killjoy from the omega earth or beta earth with another nanostorm which is i would say a nice change uh killjoy alarm bot killjoy lockdown um actually sorry about this killjoy molly damage so let's also change check out this as well 270 is this after the nerfs or uh not because she did get a damage nerf on her molly but i'm pretty sure this is still above 200 um let me just filter this out the newest last month let's say um apparently there is not really but i have to actually test this i forgot to test this but if you can also break a killjoy ult with your killjoy molly you can find line up so much easier with a killjoy molly than trying to find a line up with a ko molly let's say because uh her molly can go much much further so that's again very sad and then we got rays uh, raise blast pack her Q and satchels now does damage to fate prowler uh pay shells also now breaks fate prowler it's a very rare scenario it doesn't really change much uh so a shock darts now breaks a uh, fate prowler doesn't matter uh hunter fury her his ultimate now breaks a rain of flash breaks a raise satchel breaks a fate prowler oh wait sorry and breaks a chamber uh, trap as well doesn't really change much uh, viper snake bite uh, now can break cypher trap break cypher uh, killed all of her her utility so actually with viper you're not going to be able to break her ultimate with a single molly because it does 190 damage uh, so you're going to be 10 damage off but imagine just one of your allies doing random damage with a nade you can easily just break it with a viper molly as well now and then we got raise blast pack uh rain earlier the thing uh, sorry not uh, something that just occurred in my mind the thing about viper snake bite is that it does damage very slowly so by the time that it breaks the killjoy um ultimate it's gonna take like at least six to seven seconds and then you're gonna find lineups that are gonna travel uh, that long as well you might end up just not killing it with a viper molly even if it's damaged so i don't think it's worth to go for viper mollies to break that killjoy but it is good to know that you can do it and then we got damage multiplier uh, multiplier updates so uh, these are the things uh, that the damage does to, let's say, um, an ability does the damage to 
uh, before like in before it was like breach dealing 250 damn uh, uh sorry if it was 100 it would have done 250 to a utility like a kill to turret but now it does 100 percent, so it's just that 100 and then it was we got brimstone molly dealing 50 percent less damage so actually he cannot break kill to ult with uh, if this change is correct, he cannot basically break a kill drill because he's going to do less damage. Okay, interesting. Uh, KO Molly now does 100 as well. So as I said, he has to have only the middle of it. Uh, kill drill Molly also cannot break the kill drill ult as well. She has to use two. Okay, that's good. Uh, then we got Phoenix Molly's as well too. Uh, he's also won't be able to break it with a single utility however uh, his wall can because this change is only for hot hands as you can see but his wall damage actually can break it though so you're gonna be using his wall more so to break a kill drill ult if you want rather than his um molly then we got race blast pack now dealing 250 percent uh from 1200 i don't know what right was on when they made that uh, number uh pain shells her nade basically is now double uh, the damage so 250 okay and the boom butt is also 250 as well so does this make it easier hmm interesting because i didn't change this as uh, sorry test this as well but that is very interesting so are you saying to me that it's easier to break a kill to ult with a raisin nade rather than breaking it with oh my god okay i have to test this so Next one we got the snake bite uh, dealing also 50%. So viper breaking and kills ultimate is just out of the way. Doesn't really matter. Uh, allied ability and damage immunity. So this <laughs> this is basically cipher heaven uh, because now your allies they made these changes on the last patch, but now in this patch they made the changes to his uh, camera as well because now your allies won't be able to break your traps as easily as before so now your camera doesn't get breaked at all uh, with an ally utility uh, chamber trap cannot get break chamber teleport cannot get break fade prowler and hunt it was very funny that in some rare situations you could have break a fade ally prowler with like for example a result uh ko knife uh cannot be break killjoy alarm button lockdown her ultimate and blast pack and boom but for killjoy it doesn't really matter in before it was very rare that you could have break them uh for rays it doesn't really matter as much the sky doesn't matter as much so doesn't also matter as much and yoru also was very rare so it doesn't really matter as much now weapon updates specter got changed so for specter added a third damage range to the specter and updated the distances new distance and body shot so basically what was in before you didn't really have three distances so what two you had two things zero to t until 20 meters was 26 damage no matter what and above 20 meters was 20 dam 22 damage which wouldn't really change much you, it, the gun was still very strong on long range fights as well like i would have seen people use a ghost in long range fight and i was like why are you using a ghost or a sheriff instead of uh like sheriff would have make sense but they were using ghost instead of a specter because they were not comfortable using specter or they would think that oh a specter doesn't really do damage that much on the range uh, but now using a ghost for example for that range is better than using the specter and uh, so what are the new uh, ranges are so zero until 15 meters so it's not even until 20 so you have five less meter range it's 26 damage uh 15 till 30 meter is 22 damage so basically the old one which is 20 plus now is until 30 only and 30 meter plus is 20 damage this 30 meter plus is uh only gonna affect that very long range maps for example on the ice box you cannot really spray down and laser down a person from let's say a attacking belt uh to attacking enemy heaven anymore so you have to be more cautious with that however from my testings now uh this doesn't really i would say this too doesn't really 
affect much as much as you might think like it does affect for sure you does feel it but it doesn't affect as much as you thought it would like for example most of your fights are going to be 15 till 30 which is that 20 meter which is the same thing as before and uh this zero until 15 like this five meter doesn't really change much because that's just the range that you're gonna run and gun the person and this 30 plus is the only range that i would say you really feel the changes but uh, again if you are having an inspector and you're in a gun range that is 30 plus meter and uh, know that you're doing something wrong because the Spectre is a close range gun, and if you are fighting in a 30 minute range instead of waiting for the enemy to reach to you, you're doing something wrong. Your weapon is not made for the range of the fight that you're choosing. So if you are in this kind of range, just take cover, do yourself a favor, favor and let them come into you and just run and gun them now. And next one, we got the mode Swift play. Uh, basically, was one of the modes that a lot of people were requesting that they were saying, oh, Spike Rush is not the mode that we want. We just want to unrate it that is just simple, in and out, without really the orbs and stuff like that. And here you go. This is a very, very nice mode, I would say, that I'm not sure why they're calling it beta. Like, if you're on my testings, it is a very, I would say, nice and pretty simple mode that it's just unrated however the first team that reaches five win rounds wins the game and i would say that the only thing about it that i didn't really like is that if you're a team that starts to win a lot it's very hard to come back and that's the only thing i would change i would uh, say that they have to change and then we got bug fixes which is nothing really specific about it so that's pretty much it for this patch rundowns the we're gonna have this kind of videos every time the patch comes out one at the beginning of when the patch comes out and it's revealed and then another one after a week for the rundown of the patch like today that we just go into it and then think to ourselves what really changed did the meta change or not really and these kind of videos are going to be the videos that i don't really edit them as much it's going to only have an intro and subtitle and that's pretty much it i really hope that you enjoyed this video a lot and let me know if i need to change anything or if you have comment about it until next time bye bye Hello everyone, it's Priya from the future now. After I recorded the video, I went ahead and tested further and uh, tested all of the utilities that does damage to see which one does break the kill joy or that in before could or could not with the new update. So let's get into it. After testing further, what I've noticed is that there is now only two ability that does break the ult. Those two things are very casual things. They are sorry give me a second they are basically the raise nate and the only way that it does break it is if it pops next to the ult like the middle damage sorry the main damage has to be close to the ult or two satchels on top of the ult or ko's middle part of the molly so i'm gonna highlight that as well middle part of the molly so these are the only things now that does break the ult nothing else breaks it Beside the ult, obviously. And then next one, we have the utilities, the utilities that does not break the ult. And there's quite a, uh, a few. So we got Phoenix, Molly, and Wall. So basically, Phoenix cannot break the ult whatsoever if it's not damaged. Brimstone Molly also cannot break it. Killjoy Mollies, both of them, even is not enough to break it. So was Shock Dart, even cannot break it. So now So was Shock Dart are totally useless. The lineups that you find, I'm sorry, So was mains. But the lineups you found to break the Killjoy ult are not totally useless because it just does not break the ult. It's not enough damage. Then we got Viper's Snake Bite, which is not a surprise to everyone, I would say. So these are the things that do not break. So I'm going to highlight that with red. So these are the things that do not break the ult. However, there is one thing that also does not break the ult. And this is very good news, I would say, for Killjoy mains out there. And that is breach you heard it right breach aftershock now does not break the killjoy ult anymore and because of this reason alone this makes killjoy so much more valuable for fracture and makes her such a viable pick now because of the fact that breach cannot break her ult that she places underground of b-site anymore 
because of the fact that Breach cannot break his uh, basically Killjoy's ultimates that are made for retake. So now you force the enemy team to either aggress into you or basically totally fuck off the side. That's how it is going to go from now on on Fracture. And I think that two agents are going to become so viable on Fracture. One being Cypher, because of the fact that why I think Cypher would be a good Killjoy counter on Fracture is because you can actually have good retake setups whenever you see that the enemy Killjoy has her ult. So, oh, you see that enemy Killjoy has her ult? Just evacuate B-side. Let me do my setup that I can kill them from spawn, even. And I've seen my students come up with new setups already that does uh, basically ring a new, uh, sorry, decent and good retake setup, I would say. So that will be interesting as, as well. And also, I think that maybe we be able to see double Sentinel comps too, like uh, Killjoy and Cypher in the same team, because Cypher's camera is way too valuable on Fracture now. And I, from what I've tested, his traps are actually insane on Fracture. The way that you can set up, the way that you can set up his cams are very, very good on Fracture. So when you have, I would say a very good comp on Fracture would be like Killjoy, uh, let's add also Cypher there. This is just my opinion that this could be a good comp. And we do, because of the fact that we have two Sentinel, we're going to need very heavy aggression. So we're going to add Brimstone as our controller because he adds aggression with his Steam Beacon and also his Mollies can add aggression too. And then we're going to add Breach. I'm just going to put BR because of the fact that uh, he will be, no matter what, a good pick on Fracture, even though he cannot break a Killjoy ult, because of the fact that his uh, stun is way too valuable on Fracture, and you also need a Flasher, and he's the best out of the ones for Fracture that exists already. And then also a Neon or Raze. Like, I would say this team comp is going to be very strong for Fracture, but who knows, we'll have to wait and see how... The game is played out on uh, basically high level and also how pro teams come up with it or how basically the screams go for casual teams to see even if they will they are willing to test this comp or they will stick to their old comp and casual uh, breach and chamber comp who knows we'll see but yeah that's pretty much it all that i have for today I hope that you really enjoyed this video and if you have anything to add, please make sure to add it in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Until the next time, goodbye.